In today's homework video, we will be covering the major events that took place the first year that the Civil War started. Title your notes Civil War 1861 and follow along jotting down what is in purple from the slides into your notes and drawing pictures as you are prompted to. Abraham Lincoln was voted in as President of the United States in the election on November 6, 1860. During his campaign, Lincoln had declared that government cannot endure permanently half slave, half free, referencing that he did not support the southern states having slaves. This did not settle well with Southerners. They were outraged because they relied on cheap labor to grow their crops and sustain the economy in the South. If these Southerners no longer had slaves, they knew that they would be unable to be successful financially and would lose an entire lifestyle they had grown to rely on. Lincoln was the first Republican ever elected, and he received 180 of the 303 possible electoral college votes and 40% of the popular vote. So even though he did not win by a lot, much of the reason he had won was because much of the South did not even have him on the ballot, and the votes were spread out over four different candidates running. Check out this newspaper from the time of Lincoln's election. Can you tell from some of the headlines how the North felt to have him in office? This cartoon shows how the South took it. Abraham Lincoln won the election of 1860 without a single electoral vote from the South. The Southerners were not happy about this at all. Draw your own simple cartoon showing a Southerner's reaction to Lincoln's election near your notes. Within a few weeks of the election results coming in, the first southern state made its move. South Carolina sent a letter informing Washington, D.C. and the government of the United States that they would no longer be a part of the country anymore. They had decided to break away and create their own new country. This is called secession. South Carolina seceded from the Union on December 20th, 1860. Below, you can see the actual secession letter that South Carolina sent. Within two months, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and Texas had seceded too. Can you tell which state's secession letter this is? Did you say Florida? If so, you are correct. What about this state? Yep, it's Alabama. What about this one? It's Louisiana's. And how about this one? You're right. It's Georgia's letter informing the U.S. that they are seceding or breaking away from the Union. Notice the date on it, January 19, 1861. Within two months, the southern states that had seceded formed a new country of their own and called it the Confederate States of America. Confederate means joined together by an agreement or treaty. And these states joined together to form a new agreement to fight against the United States for their independence. Much of their inspiration actually came from the American War for Independence as they saw themselves as revolutionaries too. On February 9, 1861, the new country is officially formed. A man named Jefferson Davis becomes the Confederate States President. He's a graduate of West Point and a former U.S. Army officer, so many look up to him. You can see the Confederates' first flag below. This is known as the Stars and Bars. Draw this flag next to your notes about the Confederates. They set up their government in Montgomery, Alabama, which was considered the first capital of the Confederacy. It is later moved to Richmond, but Virginia had not seceded yet, and the deep south of Mississippi had a population of overwhelming support for the Confederate cause at this time. As you can see from this image, the flag flying above the southern mansion is the Confederate States battle flag, and we will see this flag throughout the war too. The Civil War officially begins on April 12, 1861 at 4.30 in the morning when Confederates under General Pierre Beauregard open fire with 50 cannons on a fort full of American troops located on a little island in the middle of Charleston Harbor. This fort was known as Fort Sumter and this attack is the start of the Civil War. You can see from this battle map how Fort Sumter was being pummeled from all directions by Confederate troops, color-coded in red, under Beauregard's command. 
The Union troops inside the fort were under the command of General Anderson. His forces fought back for several hours, but in the end, there was no way to outlast the Confederate guns. The Union surrendered to the Confederates, marking the official start to this bloody war. Check out these images showing Fort Sumter before the attack with the American flag flying and after its capture showing the damage from the rebel bombardment of over 3,000 shells and now flying the Confederate stars and bars two days after the battle. Here is a photo of the actual flag you see there in the photograph for 1861, the very flag that flew at Fort Sumter after the Confederate victory. Remember, there are no phones, no internet, no TV, and not even radio yet in 1861, so news travels slower than it does today. Nevertheless, people in the North and people in the South began to find out about the attack on Fort Sumter through telegraph wire communication and then through newspapers that declared the news. The North begins asking men and boys from all of its states willing to fight to join the Union Army, and the South does the same, asking them to fight and join the Confederacy. On April 15, 1861, Lincoln issues a proclamation calling for 75,000 militiamen to volunteer and head to Washington, D.C. for training and for their marching orders. Lincoln also summons a special session of Congress to meet on July 4th. Before long, the streets of Washington, D.C. begin to look like this as thousands respond to the call and come to join the army. Here is a photograph of tents encamped along the Long Mall in front of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. And here's a bunch more in front of the White House, showing their pride to fight for their country. Lincoln asks Robert E. Lee, the son of a Revolutionary War hero and a 25-year distinguished veteran of the United States Army and former superintendent of West Point, to command the Union Army. Robert E. Lee, whose home is in Arlington, Virginia, waits to see what the state of Virginia chooses to do and then declines the president's offer because he feels more loyalty towards his state of Virginia and the cause. When the news of Fort Sumter comes to Virginia, the state is faced with a difficult question. Should it secede or should it remain part of the Union? Not only is, a vi is it a vital location close to Washington, D.C., but other states look up to Virginia for leadership in the South. In the end, Virginia secedes from the United States, and within five weeks, Arkansas, Tennessee, and North Carolina do too. These states formed the 11-state Confederacy, with a population of 9 million, including nearly 4 million slaves. Let's compare those numbers to the Union, which will have 21 states and a population of over 20 million. Here is a list in order of the 11 states that seceded from the United States. List the names of at least three other states that seceded in your notes from this list. Notice Virginia, which seceded on April 17, 1861. On April 19, 1861, President Lincoln issues a proclamation of blockade against the southern ports. You see, the main way that the South got its resources was through imports that were shipped through its ports along the coast. And the main way that the South made money was by shipping its resources like tobacco and cotton through exports that were being shipped through its ports. So Lincoln's goal in blockading these ports with Union battleships is to stop the shipping. For the duration of the war, the blockade limits the ability of the rural South to stay well supplied in its war against the industrialized North. Even though his home in Arlington overlooked the Capitol in Washington, D.C. across the Potomac River, Robert E. Lee's heart is with Virginia. So when Robert E. Lee learns that Virginia has seceded from the Union and will join, join the South, he resigns from the U.S. Army and offers to command the Confederate Army instead. On April 20th, 1861, Robert E. Lee explains his reasoning for this decision. I cannot raise my hand against my birthplace, my home, my children. Lee then goes to Richmond, Virginia, and is offered command of the military and naval forces of Virginia, and accepts. Within a few short months, the Confederate troops march to Virginia and begin to encroach on the capital of the Union. 
All the troops in Washington, D.C. are ready for a fight, and both armies meet for the first time at the First Battle of Manassas, also known as the First Battle of Bull Run. This is considered the first major battle of the Civil War. On July 21, 1861, the Union Army, under General Irvin McDowell and General Ambrose Burnside, suffer a defeat at Bull Run Creek, 25 miles southwest of Washington. Confederate generals Jackson and Johnston chase the Union soldiers back to Washington, D.C. The first Battle of Manassas took place on the many farmlands southwest of Washington, D.C. One of the farmers who owned the land that became a battlefield was Wilmer McLean at Manassas, Virginia. The Civil War began on Wilmer McLean's farm in Manassas Junction, Virginia, with the first Battle of Bull Run. A Union shell actually exploded in his kitchen. We can see how close this battle was to where we are in Loudoun County from this map. What's interesting is that Wilmer McLean moves after the battle to get away from the co conflict to a little town further south called Appomattox Courthouse. Ever heard of that before? If not, you'll find out the rest of his story in a future video. Confederate General Stonewall Jackson earns his nickname Stonewall during the First Battle of Manassas. In the heat of the battle, Jackson charges his army ahead to bridge a gap in the defensive line against a Union attack. It was during this maneuver that another Confederate general, Barnard B., who was also fighting the battle, looked up and saw Jackson and his men on the hill, and he was so impressed and encouraged his own men by exclaiming, There is Jackson, standing like a stone wall. Afterward, the nickname stuck and Jackson was promoted to Major General for his courage and quick thinking on the battlefield. Go ahead and draw your own version of this event and Jackson and his men standing like a stone wall at the top of the hill. <clears throat> The Confederate Army eventually wins this battle and pushes the Union Army back into Washington, D.C. After heavy fighting all day long, the Confederates had won and the Union were shocked at their loss. It took the shattered Union Army nearly 36 hours to get back to Washington, D.C., marching almost without food or rest. As one soldier put it, this army that was supposed to crush the Confederates limped back into the Capitol more dead than alive. Another interesting fact about this battle was that it was considered a spectator event. Northerners were pretty sure this would be the first and last significant battle of the war, and they wanted to see the action for themselves. That is an actual real photo of some picnickers who had ridden out to watch the battle in 1861. Hundreds of people, including reporters, government officials, and even average citizens, traveled out to watch the battle. They made a day of it, bringing picnic lunches and wine, almost as if they were attending a modern-day tailgate party. Unfortunately, once the tide of the battle turned, this civilian crowd was caught up in the frenzied retreat of the Union Army as they all made their way back to Washington, D.C. Can you even imagine? Draw your own picture of spectators coming out to watch the battle for themselves next to your notes. So is it called the First Battle of Manassas or the First Battle of Bull Run? You probably heard me reference both of those names throughout the video. And the fact is, this battle has two names. In fact, a lot of Civil War battles have two different names. That is because the Northern Army, the Union, named battles after nearby geography, like rivers and streams, hills and mountains, etc. But the Southern Army, the Confederates, primarily named their battles after nearby towns or railroad junctions where two railroads crossed. Keep in mind that photography is a new invention and just entering mainstream American culture at this time. The Civil War, and particularly the First Battle of Manassas, was one of the very first battles ever photographed. In fact, people were amazed to see what a battle actually looked like with their own eyes. They couldn't believe the devastation after the battles, and this carried the weight and heaviness of death and destruction and the brutality of war that enabled people to realize it was more gruesome than glorious. Most people in the North had believed the war would be super short and expected that a Union victory would crush the rebels and send them into submission, restoring the country and putting the South in its place once again. However, the First Battle of Bull Run changed all of that. 
Just look at the numbers. 480 Union soldiers died, 1,000 were wounded, and 1,200 were missing. And a total loss of Union casualties was 2,680, which is approximately 9.5% of the 28,400 men who fought for the North in this battle. Compare that to the South. 390 Confederate soldiers were killed, 1,600 were wounded, and only about a dozen were missing. This is a total of approximately 2,000 men. But because there were 30,800 men fighting for the Confederate side during this battle, it only amounted to about 6.5%. The Union lost. The North is shocked. And Lincoln realizes that the war will be a lot longer than everyone first thought.